hundred years ago. And the stuff that's written there is still really good for us today. So we're going to have a quick look for 10 minutes at what is written there. Now, if you've got your Sunday school book in front of you, I know that you're probably really enjoying it. Can I have 10 minutes of your attention? So if you just want to pop those books down for just a moment, because I want to talk to you about this word. It's just about to come up on the screen. Whatever. Now, you may have heard that word before, whatever. Someone may have said that to you at some stage. You may have said that to someone else. Lots of people think that way about life and about different things in life. Now, when people say, whatever, whatever, (laughs) they're really saying, it doesn't count, it doesn't matter, I don't care. Now, that's okay with some things. Like, do you want red M&Ms or green M&Ms? But the trouble is, it's happening with really important things as well. And there are many things that we just can't say whatever to. So, let's do some examples together. Here we go. So, kids especially, but mums and dads, I'd like you to join in as well. Um, I'm going to ask you something, and I want you to then answer it with whatever. Okay? So, in your best whatever voice if you might. And then I'll get you to tell me if you can or you can't say that, but I want you to hear it out loud first of all. So here we go. First thing. So when I've finished, then you answer with whatever, okay? Here we go. So would you like vanilla or chocolate ice cream? Okay. Is it okay to say whatever to that, to that question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. That's okay. You can say whatever. It doesn't matter. Vanilla or chocolate. Although really we know it should be chocolate. Now, here's the next one. Here we go. Hey, Mum, I'm just going out to play in the middle of the street. Is that a good or bad thing to say? Bad. Yeah. Mum should not be saying whatever. Dad might say it because he's distracted. But mums should never say that to their kids. Next one. Here we go. Will you be my friend? Is that a good or a bad thing to say? Bad. You don't say that. Next one. Do you want to play cricket or soccer? (laughs) Is that a good or a bad thing? You can say that? Yeah, you can say that. You can say whatever to that. That's fine. Next one. Hey, do you want to go and throw rocks on the neighbour's roof? Is that a good or a bad answer? a bad answer. No, you do not throw rocks on your neighbor's roof. How about the next one? So, this is me talking to you, the teacher in my class. Excuse me, teacher, but Johnny is bullying me. Is that good or a bad thing for the teacher to say? Bad, that's a bad thing to say. And here's the last one. As your teacher, I am telling you that your homework must be done by tomorrow. Good or bad? It's bad. That's bad. You don't say that to the teacher. Now, whatever has actually become something which has been a problem for human beings for a very, very long time. In fact, with the first story of Adam and Eve that we read in the Bible, Adam and Eve said to God about the boundaries that he'd put in place, the rules that he had for life, they actually ended up saying, eh, whatever. In the skit today, we saw a chair which had sin on it and sin was attractive and tempting, just like in that first story with Adam and Eve. And if we say, "Uh, whatever, then we're going to find that that's not a good answer because if we treat it like that, it's going to come back to haunt us. You see, for the person who walked past a chair, which they were not meant to touch, by saying, "Uh, whatever, what they recognised eventually was that choice really mattered. The choice that they made really mattered. And that's what Peter wrote in this letter to these people 2,000 years ago. He said, Dear friends, you are like foreigners and strangers in this world. He said that because these people had decided to follow Jesus, which was a bit strange to the people around them. He said, I beg you to avoid the evil things that your bodies want to do that fight against your soul. 
What Peter wants his friends to know is that our choices really do matter, our attitudes and our actions. He goes on to say, people who do not believe are living all around you and might say to you, I might say that you're doing wrong. Live such godly lives, such good lives, that they will see the good things you do and will give glory to God on the day when Christ comes again. Caring enough to say more than, eh, whatever, really does matter. First of all, because it's actually the way that God thinks about things. Now, let me give you some examples. Let me take you through the Bible really quickly. I'm going to tell you a Bible story really briefly. Tell me what is wrong with these Bible stories in just a moment. Here's the first one. God created the earth. He created the land and the sea, the fish, the flowers, the birds, the animals, all the creepy crawlies. He created humans and he said, whatever. Is that right? No. He said, it's very good. God cared about his creation. Next one. In the next instalment in the Bible, we see this, that God saw that the very first son on earth actually killed his brother, Abel. And he said, God said, whatever. Is that right? No. no. That's, God came out and said, what have you done? Because God cared deeply about these people. Next one. God saw that his people had been slaves in Egypt for 400 years and God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and said, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. That was just a bit early. (laughs) God saw his people in slavery and said, whatever, but no... God sent a messenger, Moses. Just, just go back a slide, a click and then go. God sent a messenger, Moses. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. Yeah, God wanted his people out of there. there fast forwarding a bit, a story about Jesus. There was a man who had a very sick daughter who was about to die and he came to Jesus and he begged Jesus, Jesus, will you come? Will you heal my daughter? And Jesus said, whatever. Is that right? No. Jesus said, let's go. God sent Jesus, God Heavenly Father sent Jesus the Son to deal with our sin. And when Jesus got here, he saw what was happening to human beings and he said, whatever. Is that right? No. God sent his son Jesus, who ended up going to the cross. That's how much he loved us. He was killed there on our behalf to deal with our sin so that we, as this letter said, could come back. As lost lambs, we could come back to God. We could be saved. See, to God, things really do matter. God cares about this world. To God, you matter. And the people around you matter. This world matters. The kind of person that you're becoming matters. Because what you do and what I do matters to the people around us. And it makes a difference to what happens in our lives. God is actually interested and involved in your life. Because he doesn't want you to have an empty, whatever kind of life. He wants you to have a life that counts. In verse 21 of this letter, this is what Peter writes. He says, this is what you were called to do because Christ suffered for you and gave you an example to follow. So you should do as he did. You should live a life like Jesus that wasn't whatever, that was actually loving. This morning, we had a little bubby up the front here. Thomas and Ruth brought Zoe and they did what they did this morning because they want Zoe to have a life that counts. God wants us to have a life that counts, that doesn't just say, whatever. How we treat people matters. How we treat God matters. Verse 12 in this letter says, live such good lives that they will see the good things you do and will give glory to God on the day when Christ comes again. Now, I just want to say something before we finish. 
and that's this, that if you decide to live a whatever kind of life, sorry, if you decide to say no to living a whatever kind of life, if you decide that your choices will count, that things do matter, you might find that some people get a bit annoyed at the fact that you don't go along with their whatever kind of choices. So, for example, if a friend is stealing from a shop and we choose not to say, oh, whatever, and go along with it, how do you think they're going to feel? They might not be happy with you. If people are picking on someone and we aren't willing to say, eh, whatever, then people may not like that. Yeah. If classmates are disobeying the teacher and mucking up and we decide, oh, I'm not going to go along with it, I'm not going to say, eh, whatever, then our friends may not like that at all. They might stop being our friend or even pick on us. And you know what? When people actually start to say that to us, when they hassle us because we're not going to live a whatever life, then here's the thing. I want to give you permission that at that time, when people are picking on you because you've decided to live a life that really does matter and make choices that do help people, then I give you permission at that stage to say to them, whatever. That is your moment when you can say, whatever. If people are forcing you, pressuring you to live a whatever life, that's when you can say, whatever. Because that's when we take the whatever, which people are saying to us, and we change it into living a life which really does count. That is what Jesus showed us. That is how God thinks about you. And that is how God wants you to think about others. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you that you love us and that not at any stage have you said about us, eh, whatever, but you care about us. You're patient, your timing is different to ours, but we can never be in any doubt that you love us. You sent your son Jesus for us so that we would understand and you have given us an example to follow, a life which is not about whatever, it's a life that truly matters. So Lord, help us to choose your way, the way of love, to actually be willing to not say whatever to the kind of empty way of doing things which doesn't care. But instead, help us to choose to say whatever to those who try to pressure us to leave love behind. Lord God, thank you that you are with us in all of this. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to stand and sing one more song as we finish this morning. And as we do so, our offering is going to be taken up. If you're a visitor here, that's okay. Just let the bag pass you by. This is an opportunity for our church to show its love for Jesus in the offerings that it brings. Let's stand together and we'll sing one final song. Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty, through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender Suffered and crucified Forgiveness is in you Descended into darkness You rose in glorious 
our service to a close. If you're not one